Hi everyone, this is Zorina, trainer in business with meaning. And today I'm here again with Charlotte Common, um, our lovely guest from last time when we talked about uh, illuminating careers. And we're here with the second uh, portion of our series on workplaces and success on workplaces. And today's topic is high quality self-care, the road to success. Welcome back, Charlotte. Thank you, Zarina, for your introduction. And I love it when you call me Charlotte because I'm from Germany and that's the way it's pronounced and it feels like home. So thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so let me introduce you again to the, to the people who haven't listened to the first of our series, which I recommend you to do now. Um, Charlotte is, um, she's German, but she lived most of her life in, um, in the UK. And right now she's in the island of Mauritius, where she spent the last seven years. Um, she, is, she was a housewife, then she was a, a business owner in Germany, then she became an ordained minister, and right now she's a happiness designer, which is a really happy name, <laughs> a really happy title to have. <laughs> and we are talking about these topics from all these perspectives that Charlotte managed to gather in her life and the, the realizations that she had. And she's a really special uh, person, so enjoy the talk. <laughs> um, Yes, thank you, Zarina, for your introduction. And uh, it's full of things which I quite like to pick up on, but carry on with what you wanted to say. So I, I wanted to jump in uh, straight to the topic of uh, high quality self-care, Charlotte. Uh, because when we talk about uh, workplaces, especially, people tend to neglect themselves. They tend to focus a lot, about, uh, a lot on career and, you know, whatever is left, left out from their schedule, they dedicate to the must-do things, such as uh, children shopping, uh, you know, the really basic things. Um, very often, we only tend to, um, uh, tend to engage in fun activities up to the age of, I don't know, 30, 35, until people get coupled, and then the fun stops. Um, it suddenly becomes mostly about the daily grind and work and, um, you know, fulfilling your responsibilities. So where does self-care stay or stand in all of this? That's such an important question. Because I've been there. I brought up three children. And as you said, I was also a business owner and I was working for the church. And I felt that there was a lack of leadership because we were all overworked, really. And that gave me a lot to think about. There was very, very little time for sport or any activities. It was just work, 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 work. And I had to pause and I thought, I'm an ordained minister. And what is my vocation actually about? My vocation is about the healing of people, the liberation of people, helping people to create good lives. And this is why I'm calling myself, as an ordained minister, a happiness designer. Because, you know, everybody is so interested in designer goods. But actually, what about designing a happy life? Because that's such an important part. So life is not all about work, work, work. Life is an experience. And what, how can we create a life that allows us to fulfill our potential, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's among our friends or families. I think it's so important to check in with ourselves where we are and what we dream of and how do we feel. I can remember um, when I grew up uh, that whenever I wanted to think about anything, something to do with myself, then you're classed immediately as selfish. And it was quite ironic that actually those people who classed me as selfish never really thought about other people, but only thought about themselves. And later on, I discovered that actually this word selfishness, we need to unpack that. Because if I take care of myself, then that's not selfish. I work under the understanding that we're all divine human beings, and these, these 
uh, as these, we are on a journey, we are on an evolutionary journey of evolving, evolving, evolving more and more and more. And we do that to, through our dreams. Mm -hmm. But if we don't take care of ourselves, if we're not aware of where we are suffering or where we are in relationships that are not very healthy, or when we uh, have addictions and we don't pay attention to our addictions, you know, it's a slippery slope. And mm -hmm. soon you can be somehow buried or your potential is buried. And that's exactly what I want to talk about is that we open ourselves up and become free and live our potential and excavate our potential and let it shine more and more and more and more. And it's an ongoing journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds really beautiful, but I remember when I was working, um, and although I didn't have a family at the time when I was working in a corporation, um, there was still very little time for, for self-care. And um, now that I have a family, it's really hard to find the time. So people often ask, um, okay, I understand all these beautiful words, but how? How am I going to fit it in, in my schedule? If I do start to take care of myself properly, then it's all going to fall apart. Mm. But you see, that's, I know what you're coming from, because that's what I thought, you know, when I was working really, really hard. And I thought, if I don't keep going, I felt I was on a conveyor belt and I couldn't mm -hmm. jump off because I was so busy. But I think a key thing is to understand ourselves. Where are we actually hurting in relationships? Where are we hurting in the workplace? Because we're not heard, we're not helped to grow. And that's all part of that self-care in checking in with ourselves. Are we eating healthily? Are we sleeping enough? And how are we going to do that with looking after children? How where can we nap somewhere during the day when we have time? How can we do that at the workplace, going for a walk at lunchtime or meditate at lunchtime? And I'm going to give you another laser meditation later on just to, to connect with your soul. I think that is the key thing, what I'm hearing over and over and over again, that actually talking about the soul at the workplace is a no-no somewhere because the workplace is a place where the head functions. Mm -hmm. And when you just function with your head, you override your tiredness, you override relationships that are full of betrayal and things like that, and you brush everything under the carpet. And when you start doing that, you feel unwell. Mm -hmm. And it's such a learning curve now. And I think you and I, Serena, we have got a job to do, you know, bringing the soul into businesses. Because it's a, it's a way, a new way of thinking. There are companies who take great care of their employees and make time. You know, I know there is one company, for example, if there's a marathon runner, he is allowed to train for the marathon during work time. Mm -hmm. You know, really understanding that people function far better and are far more efficient if they're listened to and if they can... Uh, fulfill their dreams in the workplace but also outside of the workplace in sport for example mm -hmm. and what you what we're looking for what we're really striving for is rounded people what's a rounded person a rounded person is a person who knows I have this potential and I would like to fulfill it but I need an employer or I need employees who help me do that and it's a sort of coming, uh, creating unity somewhere at the workplace mm -hmm. and together with the customers. And it's a new way of thinking. Yeah, it's, it's a new wave indeed, but it's going to take time to shift the overall corporate culture because there's an overarching culture of, of how corporations should function. And then there's the new wave of all these startup companies that are now already going to mid-size that is um, starting to realize that culture and treating their employees is actually um, is, is not only cost, but is, uh, is fueling their, their growth and, um, and their revenues. Um, but um, the other thing I was thinking while you were talking was um, for the people that still work in this remnant cul corporate culture, um, it's a lot about hierarchy. It's a lot about dominance. So they feel subordinated. And whenever you decide to suddenly go out somewhere for lunch, 
um, this is not, uh, you need to take on a, a rebellious position because you're not supposed to go out for lunch and do other stuff. You're supposed to go eat lunch and go back to your workplace. Mm -hmm. And so in a lot of these um, workplaces, uh, the choice is only to be different. There, otherwise you have no choice. You have to deviate from the culture somehow. Yeah. And you're so right. There is a certain culture and it's actually introducing something new and allowing something new to grow. Because if we're just holding on to the old, nothing will change. You know, I always, you know, I'm very influenced by Albert Einstein's quote, you cannot solve a problem with the mind that created it. Mm -hmm. So years and years and generations ago, you know, the corporate world was established in such a way, dip, 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 and now people are still holding on to it. But you can't solve the problem with the mind that created it. I think Albert Einstein is absolutely brilliant, that quote. Yeah, mm -hmm. because nowadays it's we are wakening up to letting our souls speak. So if you, for example, in your private life, you start meditating and you think about your fulfillment and you start a new way of creating your life. And then you go into the workplace and you're stuck in an old fashioned um, institution or an old old-fashioned way of thinking and I think that was my problem because at the end I left the church because it was so old-fashioned and I perhaps was rebellious but I think I liked being a rebel because I think we need to move forward you know we can't just be stuck in the old traditions you know we need to see that we're all individuals who have a lot to give to this world but if we're stifled by rules and regulations, and we've always done it this way, we can't give all of ourselves and we can't shine. And that's what we want. We want a workforce that shines. We want a workforce that excite. it's excited to come to the workplace in the morning and say, oh, I wonder what I can do today. Yeah. So you know, because really it's the... infectious. It's infectious, Serena. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. And but so really the road is through self-care. The road is through high, uh, high quality self-care to improve the overall culture, to improve, you know, this increased uh, motivation that everybody has and this infectiousness. Yes. You know, back in the day when I was working, I, I'd actually meditate in the toilet. So you see, that's interesting, Zarina. I mean, you obviously went to the toilet to, to meditate because you wanted to have some space to yourself. And you felt safe and you could feel that you could let go and think, and, and why do we meditate? We meditate to bring our souls back, connect with our souls again, you know, and mm. shut the head off, but just let the soul speak. And I think, wouldn't it be wonderful if there were businesses who would clue on to this, that actually their workers need a little bit of space and create a, a meditation room where even just for a few minutes, they could just go and be refreshed. And I think my laser meditations are brilliant for things like that. You know? so, uh, but it shows you, it, that you needed that. And there are lots of people who need that just to unplug and then meditate, connect again with their souls and then go back in again. That's exactly it. Because you have to know yourself. You have to know your limits. You have to know your pain. You have to respect your pain. You have to respect your limitations. You have to respect your soul and your gifts. And it's a key thing. I mean, I'm excited because I think the more we work on this, I can see a workforce that is much happier instead of what I'm hearing constantly. I'm so stressed out. I'm so tired. I don't know how to cope with the next day. And I, I can't wait for my holidays. And, and, and so all I'm hearing is stress, stress, stress. Yeah. But actually, how about turning the workplace into a place of pleasure and fulfillment? And where we treat each other differently. Now that comes to a, another point. I think what's important in self-care is to understand the relationships we're in. When we are at work, um, there are people who we don't get on with. You know, we can't get on with everybody. But we need to respect them and we work our way through it um, somehow. But I want to talk about the inner circle. Uh, the inner circle tribe, people who are our friends, 
we can trust them, we can go to them when we need help, we enrich each other, we support each other. And these are people uh, that are very special to us because as I said, you know, we enrich each other. But what you can't have in your inner circle of friends is people who make fun of you, people who are aggressive, abusive. No, 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 you can't do that because you need to create a sanctuary for yourself. And relationships are also a sanctuary. Your home is a sanctuary where you come back after a long day of work and create a sanctuary as much as you can. Okay, we're screaming kids around and so that's a little bit tricky to have your sanctuary. Mm -hmm. But trying hard to actually also teach your children that a peaceful time is important. I can remember when I was working as a minister, I went into schools and I did meditations with them. And afterwards, the kids used to say to me, I feel so well. That feels much better than sitting in front of the television or the computer. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you see, children also are craving actually this peaceful time. Did you hear my dogs, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> by now, I'm, I'm getting used to your dogs and I love hearing the, 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 the sound of barking. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, no, so, so I think it's very, very important. And also intimate relationships, you know. Mm -hmm. If you are in a marriage that is not good and it's not fulfilling and there is a lot of aggro in there, a lot of betrayal and we're just keeping going for the sake of keeping going, I know all about it. I, I, have, I had two divorces. I tried really, really hard to avoid them, but in the end, I, I needed to have high quality self-care for myself and my children and I had to leave. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, this is all part of also teaching our children self-care. I stayed far too long in a broken marriage, far too long. Um, but what can you do? You're trying your best. And, but, but that really reduces your uh, vitality if you are in, a, in an unhappy relationship, in an unhappy marriage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So but high, me, high quality self-care. Hmm? Let me rewind a little bit back uh, on the relationships and then we go back to the uh, personal relationship of um, marriage and personal partnership. But when we are talking about friends in our closest um, inner circle, very often these people are also comprised of people that are our colleagues. Because in the end, if you work long enough in a company, um, your, your colleagues start becoming your friends very often. Not always, I understand that sometimes it's re they're really unbearable and you don't want to have them around, but very often they start becoming your friends. So in the end, work and personal life merge into one. So you identify yourself more and more with your work because your inner circle is also composed of people that are your work colleagues. And then, uh, then you need your privacy and your minute of meditation even more when you're at work because you need your time to, uh, to be secluded on your own, to get in touch with yourself um, even more because because you're surrounded by your inner circle and there's even more pressure, I feel, to perform on both ends, at work and as a friend. You know, some, sometimes you need to juggle these things. I've, I've heard this very often ha happen with people that they have uh, dilemmas um, of what should I choose and how should I act because this person is my friend. Should I be a work, um, should I be more professional, take the professional choice that would be at a detriment to my friend or should I, you know, choose the personal relationship over the professional choice? Mm -hmm. That's very difficult, you know, because, in, but you have to decide in de uh, depending on that situation, really. You know, it's very difficult, really, to talk about this now, but I know what, what, what you mean. And I think you're right. It's even more important to hook in with your soul and see what's happening in there and actually encourage the other you know, your friends to do the same. And um, because I think if we each give ourselves that space to hook in with ourselves and ask ourselves, what, what is important now? What's more important to me, this friendship or the workplace? And so this is all again, you know, about knowing yourself. That's a key thing for high quality self-care, that you actually know yourself, what is hurting you at the moment, what is disturbing you, what makes you feel good. 
because that's actually what we want to create. We want to create a life that makes us feel good. Yes, there are these bumps in the road. Yes, there are things we need to learn. And there also are these things which we need to unlearn because we have inherited mindsets from gen generations way back and we need to unlearn them. And that's sometimes quite hard because first of all, we need to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. And again, we need to always ask ourselves, how do I feel about all of this? And what can I do to make my life better? And I always think it's when we make our lives better and we create a better environment, that uh, influences the people around us. Because when we are miserable, I mean, when I'm miserable, my family knew that I was miserable. You know, I could create uh, um, surroundings of misery. We all can, you know. Mm -hmm. But that was quite often because I was so frustrated, I, didn't, I felt trapped and I didn't know how to get out of it until I learned to take responsibility for my feelings, responsibility for my choices. It's a key thing. Yeah? And then we create something better and we can create something which, is, which really influences people in a positive way. For example, when I moved to Mauritius here, I, I moved on my own. Mm -hmm. And it was quite an adventure. It was quite something. A lot of my friends thought that I was absolutely crazy. But I found myself on this island being completely alone. I'd been an army wife for 23 years. I'd given everything to my husband and I'd given everything to my children and to the church. And I needed some time for myself. And I learned high quality self-care and looking back onto all these times when I was just pushing my tiredness away, was pushing my frustration and my pain away, I realized that I had never really learned to look after myself when I was young. And this is why I feel today that actually high quality self-care should be a curriculum at school. And because children need to learn to look after themselves. But first of all, we as parents need to look after ourselves. Now, it was always my dream to create something really, really nice for my family because for many, many years, we just lived through a battleground when I was separating from my husband. And it was all very, very painful, very painful for the children. But then it was my dream and I created a sanctuary here in Mauritius for us. And when my children come to visit and they say to me, Mom, what you've created here is utter bliss. And it brings tears to my eyes because that was my dream, to create utter bliss for my family. And I know the difference between chaos, believe me, and utter bliss. And this is what makes, why it makes me so excited about being here today and talking to you about this, because it takes one person, person to create utter bliss, to other, for others to understand what it means. Now my children understand what it means to feel utter bliss. Mm -hmm. And it's like a snowball, bringing a new way of life into the world. And that's what different. you and I are doing with our talks. Mm -hmm. Yes, so other than the, the question, um, what can I do to take care of myself? What can we do or how do we take care of ourselves better? How do we learn that? Because it also has to do with uh, deep psychology, with your fears, with your... Um, values, you know, if you, if you value um, child raising above anything else or your career above anything else, of course, it's going to be the, the transformation that you need is much deeper. It goes deeper into your values of what is actually more important in your life for you to be happy. Um, so the road to self-care is, it can be much longer for some people. It goes beyond the how and beyond this question. Um, how, but how start with that? Mm -hmm. yeah start with a very very simple thing for example I mean mm -hmm. I used to be addicted to coffee mm -hmm. whenever I had or was nervous about something or I was afraid of something or there was a meeting I didn't really want to go to because it was all stressful or whatever it was I would just make myself a cup of coffee mm -hmm. 
You know, that was a sort of coping mechanism. And I think that's one of the key things to ask. Yeah, I enjoy your coffee. Uh, <laughs> it's just one of the key things to understand in my daily routine, what is a coping mechanism, you know? So I had the coffee. I also had chewing gum. I always had chewing gum in my car. So when I was in a traffic jam and I was in a hurry, I found myself that I was suddenly grabbing my chewing gum and I started chewing. Another coping mechanism. And, you know, we do it automatically and we don't even think about it. Yeah. And these are all these little things where we can start of becoming more aware of our habits. Mm -hmm. Because self-care needs to become a habit. Because quite often we have the habit of neglecting ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Overeating, for example. You know, I put on a lot of weight because, oh, I just, I need a piece of chocolate. I need some biscuits. But then I wouldn't eat just one biscuit. I would eat a whole packet of biscuits just to calm myself down. Another coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. you know, and once I started wakening up to what I was actually doing and then make positive changes that are just in that moment, drink some water yeah, and become aware of my stress and of perhaps of my fear. Let's say I had a difficult car journey and I think I'm going to sit in the car now for six hours and I'm tired and I don't know how I'm going to cope with this. And I go into the shop and I buy chocolate and I buy peanuts and all this sort of stuff. And it was just a coping mechanism to cope with this long journey. Mm -hmm. So and how about just taking some water and just pause, stop every now and then and de-stress and meditate and see yourself arriving at the destination in peace. Mm -hmm. So there, there it starts, our habits. Look at the habits. If that's perhaps the only thing people take away today, apart from my laser meditation, is look at your habits that help you cope. And why are you coping? Is there another way of looking at your life? Could you perhaps realize this is not the right relationship for me? So stressed out when my husband comes home from work. You know, I have to have a coffee. I have to have some biscuits. I have to do this. I have to do that. Yeah? Is this actually the wrong relationship? Is this actually the wrong job I'm in? Is there something else which I would really, really like to do? What would really excite me? And then you start to think about your potential and your needs how often we push our needs away when i was working for the church i i had so much work to do i was so overworked that my need for rest i was overriding that all the time mm -hmm. until my son dragged me in front of the mirror and he said please mommy look at yourself look at yourself but it was when you're on this this conveyor belt of just performing and you don't have a boss that actually is good at caring for the staff, you know? Mm -hmm. So let's hope that more people hear this talk and start asking themselves these questions and getting more aware of how they feel and what their fears are, where the anxiety comes from, so they can take the steps forward to move away from it. And you know, Zarina, it actually takes a lot of guts to look at your fears. It takes a lot of guts to look at your unhappiness because quite often we deal, we're easy, it's, it's easier for us to deal with the unhappiness of other people. Uh, mm -hmm. But actually dealing with our own stuff, that, that is sometimes really painful and we avoid it. Mm -hmm. And that's also, that can be an addiction to care for other people too much because we don't want to care about ourselves. Mm -hmm. We can talk for hours about this. <laughs> Shall we do the meditation to see how we can directly help one another <laughs> yeah, or the other can. people through this meditation? We can. I think I explained in our first uh, podcast uh, when we we're talking about the gold mine within that sometimes people think that they need to, uh, when they're thinking about meditating that they need to do some a lot of breathing and they need to sit somewhere quietly and 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 so i understand that a lot of people don't have that time and they have screaming kids around and they have a boss who says you have to finish this this is a deadline here so I have um, these laser meditations that help you just to hook in very, very quickly with yourself and find peace. 
So you don't have to close your eyes. You don't have to sit down. You can be walking. You can be sitting. You can do whatever you're at at the moment. But become aware of something which I'm going to talk about now. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things you can do that you can imagine that you are um, walking in a place which has given you a lot of comfort before. Or if you're a curious, adventurous person, think about a place where you would love to go. And then just see yourself sitting there, walking, standing, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Okay? Mm -hmm. So and now you imagine that a golden cloud comes towards you. Just see it coming towards you. And it stops just above your head. And it feels really good and comforting to know there is a golden cl a cloud above me. Perhaps it's security, perhaps it's peace, perhaps there's some inspiration in that golden cloud. And suddenly it opens and a very soothing golden rain of blessings comes down and you are within that cloud of blessings. It descends on you and it surrounds you. And I get goosebumps now thinking about it, that it's actually happening to me right now. And how does it feel to you or the listeners? It just takes seconds to think about that. And what are those blessings? Is it love you're craving for? Is it financial abundance? A new career, a new life? whatever it is for you right now. And it might be something completely different tomorrow when the golden cloud, when you let it descend on you again. Give thanks. And then just accept the gift because it is yours. It's your gift from the universe to help you become all you can be. Because each one of us has got magic within us and I'm, I feel so privileged to be part of this journey of people to release their magic because when they release their own magic they will teach others to, re to release their magic and I see a world of people who have released their magic in the private place and in the workplace. And what an amazing world we could live in. Beautiful. The overarching theme of all of our talks is um, the magic within you. <clears throat> and I wanted to remind again uh, about the remaining topics to have people um, join our podcast and our YouTube uh, channels so that they can follow the other topics if they've enjoyed our talk so far. Um, just give me a second to find them. But while I'm doing that, what are some of the, the key takeaways or the key ideas that people should stay with after this talk? Okay. That is actually key thing to take yourself seriously. To take your feelings seriously and your habits and your thoughts and your coping mechanisms. Look at the whole package. Look at the whole package of you, your body, mind and soul, because all of it is sacred. Yeah. And when we come into this world, we've all been given tools and gifts and talents to make this world a more exciting place. And life is not all about getting up in the morning, having breakfast, going to work, coming back, earning money, doing this, doing that, cleaning the house. There's far, far, far more to life. And it's sacred and life is an experience. 
and look at all of you. And again, people used to say, well, you can't just take yourself too seriously. No, I think you do have to take your thoughts and ideas and your gift, gift seriously because you want to bless the world. Mm-hmm. You want to make the world a more exciting place. And if we all think like that, wow, what a wonderful world we could live in. So take mm-hmm. yourself seriously, your thoughts, your habits, your feelings, your relationships, your potential at the workplace, your sports, ideas about sports and recreation altogether, nature, connect with nature. There's so much exciting stuff about each one of us. Mm -hmm. I I guess also the the point of taking ourselves seriously has to be, has to go through some filter, some sort of discrimination of what exactly we're taking seriously. Of course, sometimes um, there are situations and environments where taking yourself seriously doesn't make any sense. So applying your reasonability onto, you know, the way you think is, I think, key also. It's important because there are some relationships and some um, workplaces or some situations where you just have to walk away. That's Mm -hmm. also self-care, Serena. Walking away, Mm -hmm. letting things be. Yeah, it's also a very, very important part, you know, really caring for yourself as a sacred being. I think that's the key thing. Mm-hmm. Gosh, walking away is, is a big uh, problem for some people, especially when they have been with a person or at a job environment for a long time. Then this is of, of, of paramount significance to their lives when they have to cut the cord to this relationship or this job. Yeah. Very painful, very, mm-hmm. very painful. But what's the alternative? My, my, I was married twice. My first mother-in-law, she was very wise. And she said to me, as when I was splitting up from my first husband, and it was so painful. And she said to me, Charlotte, it is better to have an end in pain than pain without end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a, such a good uh, way to put it. Because also at the workplace, if we're in the wrong company and the company is not really looking after us and it's not helping us in any shape or form to develop and we're always frustrated, mm-hmm. it's not the right place. So it's better to have an end in pain than pain without end. I think that's a, uh, it's, it's, it's an important saying. Yeah, it's, it's also a beautiful way to end this talk. And now let me uh, read you once again the titles of the topics that we've planned for the coming sessions. Next, we're going to be talking about the green monster, from the green-eyed monster of division to the sparkling treasure of unity, addressing female jealousy at the workplace. This is a very big topic, and um, I'm also looking forward to it. Then the next uh, session would be time to be, how to create harmony within, at home, and in the office. And then the final session from this series about discovering the magic of you would be from superwoman to superb woman, excavating and releasing more treasures from within by finding balance. Thank you, Charlotte. Uh, I think the next topic will be brilliant about the green eyed yeah. monster because female jealousy on the whole, ooh, that's a big topic. Right. But, um, well, I think it's been absolutely brilliant talking to you and I love it what we're doing and I'm, I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Charlotte. I, I always enjoy our talks and to me, they bring a lot of enlightenment and awareness as well. So I hope other people see this the same way and it helps them in some, in some way, no matter how minute, as long as uh, it helps in anything. That makes me you know, Serena, I always think if it only what we are doing, if the work we're doing only helps one person to create a better life, we have won. You know, it's, it's brilliant. Then we've designed happiness. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Charlotte Common, happiness designer. <laughs> you take it, yeah. And beautiful, beautiful necklace. Congratulations to the one who produced it. Thank you. It was my, my friend from South Africa who gave it to me. So, and I, I love it. <laughs> Thank <Beautiful>. you. <laughs> Bye. See you. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye-bye.